What's <laughs> going on, everybody? Welcome to the debut episode of the Pat and Dan Show. We've been waiting to do this for so long. And Dan, here we are, episode one. How are we doing? Bro, I'm doing fantastic, man. Like you said, this is long awaited, man. I'm pumped, bro. Very long awaited. Uh, Highly anticipated. Appreciate everybody for stopping by for episode one. Let's take attendance slash roll call as we usually do, right? Good way to start things off. Also, I promised we weren't doing that. I know. (laughs) But listen, shout out to everybody currently in the chat. Keep in mind, you guys are here for the day. Why are people, the first thing, bro, when they see me, bro, they already mentioned that judge is on a slide, which I actually was going to get into that. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about 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 it. it. Uh, but listen, shout out to, we got Borg in the chat, Martin, Daniel, Not So Family Fun Vision, KG Baseball, Matt, Matty T Gaming. Uh, we got Lori, Benji, Dirtbike Nation, Ed King. Uh, who else? We got Yankee Fan for Life. We got Judge Hater. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, we got Diego Gonzalez. We got J-Talk. Who else? Uh, I see Jordan, Jeremy, Leo, um, Jaduck <laughs> Gaming, uh, Connor Jones. Appreciate everybody for stopping by. Sorry yeah, if right. anybody. Hope everyone can we address the elephant in the room, bro? Because somebody already mentioned Let's it. Let's address it. No, Dan, you could address it because I know where I know what right. Assuming we're on the same here. topic here, somebody said mullet Dan. And yes, that is true because this is the best hair pod, not pod. This isn't a podcast. This is the show. Danny boy got a mullet now. What do you think? What do you think, Dan, bro? Listen, you already complimented you, on me, so you gotta you, No, yeah, you called me before. You were I like, did. bro, I got a haircut. Because like I think you mentioned it to me like last week that you want to do it. I was uh, like, it's been oh, highly it. in consideration. And uh you can't tell from the front. So like at first, if people don't follow me on Twitter, you don't see automatically that I have a mullet. But then you oh, see yeah. from like the side, bro. But Dan, like I told sure. you this like right before we went live. Like, okay, we're we're gonna get into Yankee topics, by the way. But like listen, sure. just hear me out here. I think that the mullet now confirms the fact that we have the best hair duo in like the history of like content creation, bro. Name, I mean, name a duo that has better hair than us. Come on. Bro, at least by default in like the Yankee community, because like we were saying this before, everybody else basically got crew cuts. Like what we used to have. Oh, yeah. Like we're the only people. I'm I, for real. Like I think we're the only people that do have long hair in the Yankee oh, community. Yeah. Probably the whole MLB community. So yeah, you love good to start, see it. Good start, bro. Good uh, start. But listen, before we get into anything, um, let's just kind of address the debut episode, kind of like what the Pat and Dan show is going to be. Um, as you guys know, it's going to be Monday and Thursday, either at 9 p.m. like today on an off day, or we're going to be doing it um, after the after the Yankees game. So Thursday is actually a one o'clock game. So I guess we're going to be doing it. Um, oh, I didn't even know that. On it yeah, yeah, it's going to be interesting um, as far as that goes. But yeah, we're just going to be doing the, the same type of content that you guys usually see when Dan comes on here. Um, except now we have our own show. So let's go. Um, you guys know the topic of discussion for today is Gary Sanchez's resurgence. Um, kind of is he back for good, right? Because yes. we saw we saw the ridiculous season that Gary Sanchez had in 2020 for the worse, right? And now yeah. he's kind of had a complete 180 as far as his career goes. Um, but before we do get too into Gary Sanchez, I want to bring up a donation from Andrew Allen. Shout out to Andrew. Andrew is the Andrew, man. Andrew, the man, uh, bro. I got to shout out Andrew Allen, bro. Every time he submits something in. Andrew's this the man. This has helped me out so much, bro, with Yankees Avenue. And Andrew, Andrew's the man. You're the man, bro. You're the man. He says, let's get it, boys. Congrats on the new show, bro. It's going to be unstoppable. This also, does feel legit, bro. I feel like we're on like ESPN, don't it? Like, well, especially with ESPN. Oh, 100%. I mean, ESPN oh, yeah. just went down the tube, so it ain't hard to do. No, oh, yeah. Go on. Uh, but kind of going back to Gary Sanchez, right? Uh, I think he deserves so much respect. And we talked about this the last time you were on, but he's only improved tremendously <laughs> since then as well. It's actually ridiculous the tear that Gary Sanchez is going on. And I know, Dan, we both love Aaron Judge, but I think it's safe to say right now, Gary Sanchez has kind of turned into the Yankees' best hitter, no? Yeah, for sure. I mean, as of late. And, uh, yo, Trevor Plouffe. Hell yeah, Trevor Plouffe's in the chat. Let's go. Shout out to Trevor, Trevor Plouffe Plouffe's in the, the chat. Man, bro. The man. Legit my idol. He's a man. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, no. So, I mean, with Gary, bro, like, the fact that he's been carrying the offense, and this is what I want to get into when I said that I'll get into how Aaron Judge isn't playing well. The fact that the Yankees are playing well lately, and it's largely due to Gary Sanchez playing so well, and – Aaron Judge is not hitting at all. Just imagine what's going to happen when Aaron Judge does start hitting and like the rest of the offense starts clicking. And I meant to get into it a little bit later, but I have the June leaderboards for the Yankees hitters since the start of June. And of course, Gary, he leads the way with, yeah, he's hitting 315 with five homers, a 184 weighted runs created plus. Now, I alluded to this in the pre show, Pat. Guess who is number two? He's the second second best hitter, second best hitter since the start of June. I try to get it out of you, Dan, but like you wouldn't give it to me. I'm nah. assuming that you wouldn't tell me because it's Brett Gardner, but there's no way it's Brett. So my prediction is going to be, drum roll, please. I'm going to go Miguel Andujar. No, believe it or not, he's actually slightly towards the bottom because he has been slumping a little bit lately. 
Brett Gardner is the Yankees' second best hitter since the start of What numbers Bro. prove that, Dan? So, okay, so he's played 16 games. Gary Sanchez sure. played 15, by the way. Um, he's played 16 games. He's hitting 270 with two homers. He's slugging 568, 417 on base, weighted runs created plus of 166. So, yeah, Brett Gardner, he's been the Yankees' second best hitter. But don't let that distract you from how no, good that's, Gary that's Sanchez not has real, been. Though. But that's it's, not real. It's true. You, you want to deny it. But, um, yeah, no, Gary, he's been absolutely ridiculous. And, like, I think, like, it was very much showcased in, like, the game yesterday when, like, he's not just pulling the ball anymore. Like, he looks like 2017 Gary Sanchez where he's going opposite field. And I tweeted this out yesterday. Bro, was that not a car? That double he had in the first inning yesterday, was that not a carbon copy of the 2017 oh God, ALCS yes. game four double, bro? Like, yeah, it was identical. Yeah, oh, I mean, it was a little the bit fast more location, the right, yeah. Yes, the fast location, whatever. But, like, the swing, bro. Like the way Gary is is looking right now, bro. Like it, not just like a a Gary hot streak. Like I feel like he actually is back. Now I mean he's gonna get cold at some point, as all hitters do. Like that's just baseball. But I mean, bro. Like if Gary can even just be like, like he's at like a one twenty weighted runs created plus right now. Like if he can even be just like a one fifteen guy for the rest of the season, bro. Like how huge would that be? And let me while I'm you know holding the floor here talking about Gary, bro. Cole starts what tomorrow? I think yeah. we're in agreement that Gary should be starting tomorrow behind the plate. Oh, one thousand. And listen, listen. I am. I understand where Boone's coming from with like what he's saying. Like his his logic is that Gary he obviously ain't gonna catch every single day, right? So on that day you're gonna give him off. You just do it on the cold day so Higgy can start. But in a series that's starting with an off day before the first game and Cole starting game one, you have no reason not to start Gary. If Cole is that good of a pitcher, which obviously he is, he can pitch and pitch decently to Gary Sanchez. Yeah. No, I, I'm I'm on this train a thousand percent. I posted a video about this last week, kind of explaining how important it is to kind of just improve that Cole Gary dynamic, especially as you go down the stretch, right? Because my main argument for this is kind of similar to the, the John Carlos Stanton situation, kind of him playing in the field as well. The first time you have these guys doing things, you don't want it to be in the postseason. So John Carlos Stanton, for example, when the Yankees make the World Series, because I'm still banking on that, you don't yeah. want his first time in the field to be in game one of the World Series. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So also kind of going back to Gary with that, you don't want the first time Gary catches Cole to be in game one of the ALDS or the, or the American league wildcard game, because if Gary continues at this pace down the stretch, which he probably, he probably won't, to be honest with you, Gary's a very streaky hitter next month. We might well, see he, him. He won't be like a, a 180 way to run straight plus good. But like, like I was no, saying yeah. before, I feel like he is good enough to like, will a hundred percent be like an above league average offensive catcher. For like sure. 100%. For sure. And that's exactly what I'm saying. Like you're going to need his bat yeah, in the lineup so. for, for game one of the ALDS or any postseason game, to be completely mm -hmm. honest with you. Let's like so say, think, set a scenario though. Like say tomorrow was ALDS game one, obviously sure. Cole would pitch. You think Gary would start? I don't with the think way, he like, would, but, but I maybe, think he should. But that's why you got to have, you got to pair Cole and Gary now. A hundred percent. Speaking of Stan real quick, did you see he's going to try to get into the outfield by, uh, by July? Which, which that's clutch. No, I'm not sure if like, that's just it's like Stanton saying that. Like, I'm not sure. I don't have the Yankees been on board with that. I haven't seen you know, like as Boone commented on that, but I mean, so I, I like Stan's logic, bro, where he's saying like I don't want to have to sit through, sit out during another interleague series. No, yeah, no, that, dude, you could you could argue we win game one if Stan's in the lineup in in, I agree. Uh, in Philadelphia. No, I agree, and also I mean, you kind of when you asked like the question of the Yankees addressed it, Boone actually did mention it. I believe it was when. Who got hurt in the outfield? I don't remember, but someone not today. Hit, not today. Oh, no, it was when, when Hicks got hurt. Yes, yes, yeah. but that's different because that same day, that's when Stanton got hurt like 15 minutes later. Remember how ironic no, that yeah. was? Yeah, that's what so I'm saying. That's what I'm, I'm saying. Like, have they mentioned it since Stanton came I don't back think so. from the IL? No, I don't think okay. so. Because they I might not Stanton be on board with that. that yeah. Um, yeah. But honestly, I mean, kind of going back to Gary real quick, I think that it's just finally, we were talking about this last time you were on, how he just deserves a little bit more respect than he's gotten so far. And I think he's finally starting to earn it. Like, you look at Yankee fans, bro. He got like a round of applause at the stadium these past couple of days. Um, I think it he's seems definitely like everyone's starting to earn a train. Everybody but the All Star voters apparently, bro, because he's still not even in the top three. Which I'm actually not too worried about that one because it's like the All Star voting is like a crock of crap. You know, no, Martin yeah. Maldonado, he's third in catching voting right now. I think so he has like stupid. a he has like a 580 OPS. But if they're still doing like that final vote stuff this year, Gary, I feel like has to be a candidate for that. He'll, he'll find his way onto the All Star team, um, some way, and like you know, not rooting for it, but like. You know, the catcher position is the most likely position to possibly get injured. So, I mean, like, he's the next, oh, yeah. the most re obvious replacement if somebody does go down. Bro, I, I don't know like, how many catchers make it. I think three do. I'm pretty sure, think, right? But, bro, did he you see, like, Kurt Suzuki's point. ahead of him? I just know. Like, stupid, bro. I know Grandal's in, ahead of him, which that, that makes sense. And then is Suzuki in front of him? 
I thought I saw Suzuki. I mean, regardless, Gary's not in the top three, and he should be because he's, he's second in OPS among all catchers. And his defense hasn't been brutal this year at all. It's just been like a slightly below league average. No, I agree. And that's also kind of like why we go back to the whole like Gary, why he should be starting for Cole thing here. Um, Like, I don't know if you agree with me on this, but Kyle Gashoke and his defense, a little bit overrated. Just a little well, bit. Well, yeah. I mean, it depends like which part of his defense you're talking about. Because I mean, like his ability to receive the ball is apparently like, very good framing and top framing, not sure yeah but also like calling a game like pitchers do like throwing to him but you know cole's really the only example we can go off because he's a guy that's so anal about it you know cole's that good of a pitcher which we know he is like i said before he should be able to pitch to gary and he wasn't exactly. brutal last year when he was throwing to gary I, you have to admit he was better with higgy but like he's a hundred percent can be like still an ace caliber pitcher with gary sanchez and like wouldn't he want that bro wouldn't you want especially with the way the yankees offense has been majority this year not lately but like, wouldn't you want to have Gary Sanchez in there and risk, okay, maybe you'll give up one more earned run, but Gary can hit you with three-run home run to give you the lead and get you the win. Like, wouldn't no, you yeah. want Gary Sanchez to be in the lineup if you're Cole? But that's exactly what I'm saying in the sense of, like, bro, like, at some point, if this is Garrett Cole's doing, which I'm kind of assuming it is at this point. Oh, it has, it has, to, bro, be. It has to be. Not to interrupt you, but, like, it, if Cole went up to Boone and he said, go ahead, start Gary from now on, like, I feel like it's the end of discussion. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why I'm assuming it's on Cole's side. And at that, like, I, I say this, but I, I say it very lightly. Like, you might just have to tell Cole to suck it up, bro. Because also, you have to keep in mind, like, last year when he did have kind of, like, those decent numbers pitching to Gary, you also have to remember, like, that was in the beginning of the year where Cole usually starts off slow anyway. Excellent. Like, Cole hit, like, his peak in the season right when they kind of switched things over to Kyle Higashioka mm -hmm. to catcher. So, honestly, like, I, I think that Gary has to be Cole's catcher. But, like, let's I don't know. Let's mention one more thing, bro. too. Cole pitched to Gary opening day. He was pretty exactly. good. What, what, what did he throw? Like six innings, two runs, something like that? Something he was good. I, I think eight Ks. Like he, he was good. He, he, looked, he looked good. He oh, yeah. I, I agree. I mean, bottom line here, Gary Sanchez is a tank. Um, I think, listen, as long as he just continues you to know what it this, is. What he's you doing know what here, it bro, is. What? Tell me players don't automatically get better when they're wearing high socks. Okay, no, I'm kind of on that train. But Dan, I'm actually surprised you like high socks because you're like such a baseball traditionalist. Traditionalist? What do they always wear back in the 30s, bro, when baseball was at its best? High socks. Stirrups, bro. Well, bro I'm when off, baseball bro, was it, at its it, best in nah, the that 30s? Was a joke. That was a joke. That was a joke. <laughs> um, but, bro, like even like going back, like when you played Little League, bro, I'm not sure if you wore like low pants or whatever. Bro, I, I alternated. But like I know the days where I felt best was wearing high socks. No, bro, I wore high socks for A-Rod, like easily. Oh, 100%. Yeah. But when I started pitching, I did wear the lower pants because like – Need some like flexibility wise, but uh, yeah, no, I think high socks, bro. And I say this about like even like when I'm going to the gym, bro. Like when you look good, you feel good, you perform oh, better, 100%. and that's absolutely a fact. And Gary, bro, he's worn high socks. I'm pretty sure like maybe one game he didn't wear high socks this year. But and you know played, what else it is? Well. You know what else it is? It's kind of just a Gary, Gary, a Gary, Gary adapting to the league that that's kind of like adjusted to him. And I don't know why it's taken so long for the Yankees to realize this. Gary has kind of like abandoned the high leg kick, not entirely. But it's much less short, noticeable. Short. Yeah, much less noticeable than it used to be. And, bro, this is something that we talked about last year. In 2016, when Gary was at his peak, he was Babe Ruth of baseball, bro. He incorporated the toe tap. He, he would adjust his his leg kick and toe tap. He would look back and forth depending on the pitcher. Mid-at-bat. Yeah, yeah. It, would, it would depend on um, how many strikes he has on him, depending on the pitcher. And I think I don't know what kind of took Gary and the Yankees so long to kind of realize that he needs to go back to that approach. But it seems like he's back to it, and it's kind of working now. Yeah, for sure. And also, too, like, now that I think about it, like, bro, like, when Gary, like, lost his starting catching job, like, that was really based off of what? Like, a two-week sample size, in a way? Yeah. Like, it was, like, like third week of April through, like, the first week of May where they kind of gave up on him. Like, I mean, that's just baseball, yo. Like, we're seeing with Aaron Judge right now. Like, players go through slumps. Like, Gary was great the first, like, week and a half of the season, had a rough next couple weeks, and then look what he's done over the last month. Because, bro, and Talking Yanks put this out the other day, and it's so true, like, Gary's went from, you know, having a good stretch, like his season numbers, thanks to this stretch are overall just good. Like he's having a good season now. Like it's not yeah. just been hot lately. He's just had a good, he's having a good season. His OPS is like 820. Um, and let me, before we finish up this topic, I just want to go through uh, who's like the leaders offensively for the Yankees since June. So obviously Gary's one. Gary's I know, but two, then like you I say offensive before. leaders, but like what, what numbers are these based on? Well, way to run straight plus, and then I give you the stats. I mean, what, you all understand okay. way to run straight plus, right? Because I'm big on that. No, Same yeah. deal as OPS plus. So look at 100. 100 is league average. Anything above is um how much better. Because, bro, are. like you just throw me off entirely when you say like Brett Gardner has been the, the Yankees' second best hitter. Well, he has been. No, no I mean, he listen, hasn't, though. No, Dan, no, no. He no since you can't June, sit he here and tell been. me that. No, but you no, can't sit he here and been. tell me that. He had. No. He probably had, what, one good week. 
in the beginning of June, and since then he's probably well, batting I'm like saying under two hundred. Statistically, since the beginning of June, he's been the Yankees' second best hitter. He has a one sixty six weighted runs created plus. I know, but Dan, that's why you can't trust advanced stats like for everything. No, you can't. There's no, no way you can sit here and tell me that you truly that's, believe that's Brett Gardner has been the fact. Yankees' second best hitter. Oh, I do. Now, do I say he's like the best power hitter? No, but look at his on base percentage. He has an on base of four seventeen. He's slugging five sixty eight. What does that tell you right there? If you want to go by standard OPS, you can. All he's right, just, so. All right, so well, let's, let's if you had to pick one stat to go by who's been the Yankees' best offensive player, or just to determine offensive value in the first place, like what would you go by? OPS? Is it essentially average. no, I'm playing. No, no, but Dan, genuinely, genuinely. Like I understand like weighted runs created plus and like how like that incorporates into obviously determining whether or not a batter's value is good. But this is laughable. Like if you sit here and say that Brett Gardner's been the Yankees' second best hitter, I'm just well, it's saying. not like I'm, it's not like he has like a 105. And the fact the that you stand by that though. Because I see facts and I go by them, bro. That's how it goes. I don't know. It's not what? like, yeah, if he had a 105 weighted runs created plus, that would mean he's 5% better than the league average offense. I know you know that. But that would be like, okay, he just had a good game or so. Bro, it's been, he's played 16 games, 166 weighted runs created plus. Dan, have you pers- watched him at the plate? Pat, I. this isn't like, it's not like there's some formula they throw. Like, <laughs> weighted runs created plus, bro, is legitimate. I, like, I know that. But so what are you trying to, why are you trying to dispute me? Am I fan graphs? No. You can I'm trying to OPS dispute plus you. It would be the same deal. No, Dan, I'm trying to dispute you because I don't know. For my, trusting my it? mind. For trusting it? No, for, for believing it. Okay, let me tell you. Can I just finish what I was going to say? For living by. Yeah, yeah, go on, go on. Okay, Stanton is three by weighted runs created plus. He is 157. Urshela is four with a 134. And Duhar is fifth with a, with a 103. Judge has an 83 weighted runs created plus. So he's been 17% worse than a league average offensive player since the start of June. Yes, Judge has struggled. Oh, so you believe it for Judge, but not Gardner. Okay, but at the end of the day, Dan, you tell me these numbers, but tomorrow, the Yankees play the Royals, ninth inning, who do you want up, Aaron Judge or Brett Gardner? Oh my God, you're taking this totally out of context, bro. How is that taking out of context? You're telling me that Brett Gardner's been the second best hitter on the Yankees. You're telling me you would trust him in in a big at-bat tomorrow? Dude, just because I'm reading you off the stats doesn't mean that's where I believe like the how good the player is. Mookie Betts right now, if you want to go by weighted runs created plus, is like the 50th best player in baseball. Does that mean that's true? No. He's the exactly. third best player in baseball. That's what I'm trying to player. say. But that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying Brett Gardner is the second best offensive player in the Yankees. I'm saying statistically he has been. No, that's not what I'm saying. I want to get you that said clear, bro. In June, you, you said in June fact. he was the second best Yankees hitter. That's exactly no. what you said. So, Pat, do you think I'm saying Aaron Judge is the seventh best Yankees hitter? Hell no. He's the exactly. number one best hitter. Exactly. Yes. What are you saying? You're trying to rile me up right now, bro. And it's no, not going to work. No, because working. you riled me up by saying that Brett Gardner has been the Yankees' second I'm, best. Do you want me to send you a screenshot? I'm telling you facts. I am telling you concrete facts right now. He's been statistically their be- second best hitter since the start okay, of June. So since it's the start statistically, of statistically, Aaron Judge is the Yankees' seventh best hitter. No, he's been their seventh worst hitter since the start of June. And do you dispute that? Dan. <laughs> okay, no, you're Dan. He has You're been. literally the- countering yourself here. No, he's been. He's not. Aaron Judge is not the Yankees' seventh worst hitter. He's been. He has, he has been yes. since the start of June. What don't you understand about that? I understand it. Okay, moving on, moving on. No, it's, bro, it's like, who's a better shortstop? Francisco Lindor or Glaber Torres? Francisco Lindor is. Who's having the better year? Glaber Torres. Does that mean he's better than Francisco Lindor long term? No. Do you, how do you not understand what I'm saying? I'm actually I'm baffled by this. Bro, I'm not understanding what you're saying because, Bre- okay, statistically, actually shocks sure, me Brett Gardner is having a good like- month. But this is like, like this isn't something I feel like we would be like disputing each other on. Like this is like common sense to me. I'm, I'm saying disputing the- you because I don't care what Brett Garner's weighted runs. Okay, plus are. so that's what it is. Just admit that if that's I what it other, is. If I named any other player, okay, how about this, Giancarlo Stanton? If you said about wh- Clint Frazier, I would call you crazy too, bro. Because that would be wrong. You're right. Okay. I'm I'm going fact versus falseness, or what's what's the word? Fact versus fiction, not falseness. Giancarlo Stanton, according to weighted runs created plus, is the last thing I'm going to say. Has been the Yankees' third best hitter this month. Would you believe that? Sure. <laughs> you're full of shit, bro. I'm sorry. How? Because you're not making any sense, bro. Dan, you cannot tell me that you trust Brett Gardner in this lineup right now. That's not what I'm saying, for Christ's sake. Okay, <laughs> say okay. Say Tyler Wade, just for argument's sake, had a, was batting 600 last week with three home runs. Sure. Statistically, Tyler Wade has been the best Yankees offensive player over the last week in this argument, not real life. Does that mean he's the best Yankees hitter and I want him like starting full-time for the rest of the year? Hell no. I'm just giving you facts over so the last week. Why does week. it matter? Just to irritate you, bro. That Brett Gardner's been good. And, <laughs> no, I know. I know that was your goal. And, and, let me tell you this. But at the very least, bro, like I'm not bullshitting on this. Brett Gardner, it might mean he's not washed. And hey, oh give him the- Oh my God, give him the, Dan. Pat, no player that has, that's been 60% better than a league average offensive player for almost a month now, it, that, that means they're not washed, okay? You Doesn't can't mean he's sit great. here and tell me that Brett Gardner's not washed. 
he's showing that he may not be. And listen, oh my listen, God. listen to this. Listen to this. Does it make like you feel any better? Or not just about Gardner, but like Yankees hitters in general lately. Have you noticed they've been hitting better? Wanna know why or wanna know a reason which could be why? What's happened lately, bro? Pitchers aren't using the sticky stuff. No oh, more sure, spider yeah. tech. So maybe Brett Gardner, when he's facing pitchers who are, I don't want to say cheating because almost every pitcher is doing it, but when he's facing pitchers who have an unfair advantage, sure, he's washed. But when he's not and it's a more level playing field, he's a little more competitive of a hitter. You hear me, bro? Okay. I think we should just move on from this topic because I just, I literally lost like 15 brain cells in the past 10 minutes. No joke. Yeah, because you're, never mind. I almost said a word that would get me canceled. Just kidding. No, Dan, literally, because you're, tr- all right, whatever. We're not, we're, we'll probably get back into it later, probably. But listen, speaking of the Yankees hitting uh, more, li- more often, I- I've seen somebody being dumb in the comments, and I'm just going to go on. Go on. All right. Listen, speaking of the Yankees getting better as of late, uh, their, their offense is definitely improving uh, since that brutal week where, Actually, it was more than a week, right? It was a few weeks where they just looked like they were the worst team in baseball. But, I mean, do we think that they're back for good now? You sweep the Blue Jays. You take two out of three from Oakland, one of the best teams in the American League here. Now they're going into a three-game series with the Royals. Do you think that this team is actually back? I do. And um, more so, honestly, like I'm feeling better about this team now than I did during the uh, the 23-9 and nine stretch. For one, the reason I just brought up how pitchers aren't using the spider tech no more. And I feel like... Uh, it's like a little more like we can buy into this hot stretch a little bit more, you know, it's only been like a week because like the offense is clicking, which is what we thought like would be the thing that would carry this team. Like before in May, it was kind of like, like, I don't know, like, didn't you get the sense that it was eventually going to end because the pitching was the thing that carried us and a red no. hot John Carlos Sand, of course I did back in when like, the beginning of May, when we were on that tear, like the pitching is what carried us. I didn't think that was sustainable. The offense though, which is carrying us now besides the final game uh, against Oakland, that is sustainable. Like I do buy into this offense, and like I, we, I think most of us kind of have up until like the first couple months of the season. This offense is good, and they can play this way, especially with weather getting warmer. There's actually been I saw a rumor that um they might be changing the balls back. I'm not sure if that's true or not. I'm just saying, and it would um, be smart to do so. I, I don't I don't know why they haven't already. Maybe they'll yeah. do it at the All Star break. But uh, and then with pitchers not having that unfair advantage, bro. Like I feel like our hitters are good enough to where they can carry us to a postseason spot. And hey. Total change of scenario, bro, from like last time I was on. The division is 1, once again in reach. The division is once again in reach. Within, I think, exactly a week's time, we went from being nine back to what will be four and a half back right now. I'm not sure what Tampa Bay and Boston yeah. did today if they if they played, but we're back in it, bro. Like it's 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 a race again. Now we were never out of like the postseason hunt at all, but like the AL East, like not gonna lie, you know, we admitted it. It was looking kind of like like we weren't very hopeful about it. But now, like, you can not only just dream. Like I feel like it's like it's a legitimate race. Like we're in the race for the AL East. For sure. No, I agree with you a thousand percent. I mean, you kind of look at like where this team was a week ago in less than a week, bro. We've gained like what five games in the standing, something stupid like that. Um, So I think you just kind of have to look at the team right now and kind of just picture the trajectory that they're on. Right. And I think right now the Yankees are on the upswing for the first time in a while. However, I genuinely hope Dan that the Yankees kind of don't get some false sense of hope here, uh, especially with Luke Voigt coming back tomorrow and, uh, Corey Kluber, which that is big, eventually. that is big though. Wait, let me finish the point here. Yeah. So with Kluber coming back and Sevy coming back, Darren O'Day coming back, I don't want them to get some false sense of hope that like, they don't need to make any moves to improve this roster because there's still some key holes that need to be filled here. I'm with you. I just say something real quick, bro. It's funny. Cause like you put my name in the show. All of a sudden I'm interrupting you left and right again, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm with you, bro. They definitely got to make a move. I do think they're going to get an outfielder and, uh, have w- to replace who? Brett Gardner, because the second be best starting. hitter in the month of June. Yeah. Oh my God. I, I, I'm in shock. If you still don't understand what I'm saying, <laughs> but yes, Brett Gardner should not be the Yankees starting outfielder, which he was never supposed to be. He was supposed to be a fourth outfielder, which he's fine. Be. We agree on that. Good. Then we agree, Pat. Anyways, okay. Cashman, he said that they're absolutely going to be buyers. So that basically a limit, unless they go on like a, Oh, and 20 stretch before the, the, the trade deadline. He said, they're going to be buyers. So that's good to hear. And he also said, it's not out of the equation that they might go over the luxury tax. Now, obviously that's up to how Steinbrenner. I don't think they will either, unless like they really feel like they need to go and get Max Scherzer. Kind of like what Steve Cohen said about the Mets. Like it's not worth it to go one to $2 million over, but like if there's a piece you think will put you over the top and at least secure you going to the world series, make you the clear cut favorite in the American league. I think if Scherzer's that guy and they really do feel that way, I could see them going over the luxury tax just with Cashman saying that. Not that we should I mean, believe him necessarily, but like it is nice to hear. Like, even if they're feeding us BS, bro, isn't it nice to hear that in a way? At least no, that we're it's not selling. Nice to hear. Yeah. It's nice to hear from Cashman in general, right? Especially after the, the rough stretch that the Yankees just went on. You see that um, somebody just commented in the chat, though. That what? That's very much could, could happen. Uh, Irving Figueroa. 
Brian Cashman, we don't need a center fielder. Have you seen Gardner's stats? But that's June? what I'm telling <laughs> you, Dan. Yeah. But this is what I'm telling you. It's like, that's why, okay, that's why I get so worked up, right? Because, like, you give me these stats from Brett Gardner's month of June, but I still don't think that we could sit here and say that he's the Yankees' starting center fielder moving forward. So oh, I think no. that's why it just still creates like a false narrative because while he might have had a decent month of June, the Yankees still need to go out and get a legitimate center fielder. Now, what m- might it be like Cattell Marte, Starling Marte? A lot of people uh, are saying Andrew Starling Marte now. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think he's making a lot more money. I don't know, but all I'm saying is that the Yankees need to go out and get an outfielder like that because I don't want to go down the stretch with Brett Gardner in center field. And to be honest with you, like I'm not even that high on Miguel Andujar in left field. Yeah, and um, he's slowed down a little bit lately too. So I mean, yeah. and like his defense isn't great; it's improved. Ah, uh, I mean, you at least have to get an outfielder, right? And then come postseason time, then it'll probably be like a toss up: whoever's playing well, Guardy or Andujar for left field. Who would you go with? If like, I mean, obviously, if, it depends. If how... postseason started tomorrow, yeah, and we had another outfielder, like we got a yeah. center fielder, I'd. Obviously, that whoever that is in center field and then left field, that would go and do hard right now and then swap so out for Guardi in like the seventh. So would I. Defense. So would I. I mean, well, well, no, Clint Frazier's not playing too great lately either. I mean, like over the last couple of games, he's played well, hasn't he, or now? I mean, he's Clint, in the mix too. Okay. He had a good game, didn't he? Or am I, did I dream that? No, Clint's actually been decent lately. Now, I want to talk about Clint just for a little bit. Um, I'm sure you kind of relate to me when, when I say this, but I feel like the Yankees have kind of been so disrespectful to Clint Frazier. I mean, if you look at his stats, like for his last 20 games or so, he hasn't been that bad to the point where he needed to sit for a week. The dude literally didn't get a start for almost the entire week last week, bro. Especially after the pinch hit double in Toronto that won them the first game of the series. It's just, it's getting to a weird point at this point uh, with Clint Frazier's Yankees career. I'm on board where you either send the dude down or trade him, bro, because it's borderline like disrespectful how they've treated him. Can I tell you something? Are you going to bring up his weighted runs created plus? You you might want me to with your argument since it started June 1st. Oh, go for it, Dan. 132. That's really good. I get it. I That's get good. it. No, That's I good. know. That's oh, good. You're actually so, defending me here. No, I am. I am. And that's funny because I want to look that up to disprove you on that because <laughs> it honestly doesn't feel like Clint's been amazing over that. Like, But that's what stretch. I'm trying to tell you because he hasn't played, bro. He hasn't got I the say, uh, I say uh, another like – say like Indoor keeps like kind of crap in the bed, which he has been the last few games – for another like week or so, then I think Clint should be very much like your everyday left fielder like Andy Horst been over the last few weeks. Now, the thing I'll disagree with you on is, or like, somewhat disagree with you on, is I totally would have agreed with you about how like the Yankees are screwing over Clint like going into this year. That's always been the case. Like they have not like treated him the way he should have been treated, you know? But like for a good portion of this year, like and still his season stats right now, Clint Frazier has not been good this year. And like you can I agree. That. No, yeah. So I sure. mean like he, he was given the opportunity to to have the left field job, and they didn't handle that perfectly either. I mean, Barely. Mark Garner was, what, starting and left, like, the third game of the season, I yeah. think, right? But still, Clint I mean, was he, benched for two Clint, games, I think, ten games into the year. That was dumb, yeah. Yeah, But dumb. he still has had his fair share of playing time, and for a good while, he was getting consistent at-bats, Clint. Like, from, like, April to June. Before April Andrew to Hart May. Up, yeah. yeah, like, he was getting consistent at-bats, and he didn't play well. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if he keeps hitting well, then then sure. Somebody brings up, is Clint Frazier still a bust in? As of right now, I'm sorry, Clint Frazier is a bust, but that doesn't mean as a Yankee, as a Yankee, it doesn't mean it's necessarily his fault. But you know, I everybody agree. was everybody was nagging on me the other day because I said Clint Frazier is officially a bust, and then he had uh, he had that good game, he had the two doubles, which was what Sunday, I think, whatever. It yeah, was, but I yeah. think so. No, bro, that was I mean that kind of like led to the Yankees rally because um, the the first double he, they kind of left him stranded, but then the second one was when Judge drove him in, that kind of started the whole um, run scoring fiasco there. But I mean, honestly, like. It, I just want to see, I bring, bro, I bring up this analogy all the time. It's like a toxic relationship right now between the Yankees and Clint Frazier. I just want to see them break up and I want to see Clint Frazier do better with himself, bro. I want to see him go somewhere else and succeed because I think that he has all the talent in the world to do so. I just think he's been so misutilized in the Yankees organization. We're talking about a guy who could have been called up as like a starting center fielder, or left fielder, whatever, in yeah. like 2018. Um, he made his debut in 2017. Never really got a real chance. Then it, it, he just fluctuated so much between AAA and the major leagues over the past few years. You can't really blame the guy for not being able to like kind of just get his groove at the plate, especially mm-hmm. when I mean I know like we talk about advanced stats, and I'm like a firm believer in like the whole mental aspect of the game that goes beyond stats. You look at like bro, Clint Frazier was probably looking over his shoulder the entirety of the beginning of the season. And that has to do something on his playing time. You can, you can tell me I'm wrong. I don't care, but especially after 
let's say I think Clint was pretty solid like five games into the season. Then he slumped for about five games. I think the 10th or 11th game of the year, something like that, the Yankees go to Tampa. And then he was benched for those two games. Um, and Brett Gardner started over him. You have to you have to think that that messed with his mentality somehow, some way, even it, just a little bit. That it he it made him look over his shoulder yeah. for the rest of the season. I don't think you're wrong in saying that. Um, let me ask you though, outside of like the Yankees, like the actual organization's handling of him, do you think New York has any effect on Clint, like negatively? Like, do you think he might like put a little too much pressure on himself? Like, you it may not be I the right fit the for him. Is- Outside you know what of what the Yankees think? have done to him, you know what I'm saying? Like just like New York, like playing in the market of New York alone. Like, do you think that? Yes. You know why? Because the Clint Frazier that we see on the Yankees right now, this is not Clint Frazier. Um, the Clint Frazier that we saw that we saw when he first came up, right? Kind of like the fun guy, the guy who would kind of say whatever he wanted to. Um, that's Clint Frazier, bro. And I think right now we're just seeing like a dude who's just a shell of himself. He can't truly be himself. Um, he's worried about the New York media kind of ripping on him if he says anything wrong. So yeah, I think truly if he goes to a place like Arizona, um, I think that we would see a dude who his confidence would be back. Um, and so what you're I saying is um, you want to see some well. some gross long hair past the neck and you want to see some cocky bath lips. I, I never said that, but listen... <laughs> No, but Dan, listen, listen, listen. I'm kidding. Like we no, we joke around about it, but like just like how we were talking about before with the high socks, right? If you if you feel like you look good, you're gonna play good. And in that case, like, bro, it it goes past looks at that point. It goes like in, in mental space. And if Clint Frazier feels like he's not in a good mental space in New York for whatever reason, if it's because he can't grow his hair longer, because he can't grow a beard, I don't know. But for some reason, it just seems like it's not clicking for him in New York and he might need a better environment to do so. I think that's fair, but I mean I'm with you. I mean, I feel like he, he's done after this year. Like, unless he goes on, like, a tour stretch. And it's not, like, just, like, He might offense, get traded at the deadline. Like, anybody who wants to criticize and do hard defense, like, they have to basically say the same thing about Frazier. Because, and I thought this ever since going back to last year, like, yeah, Clint was a gold glove finalist in 2020. But, like, bro, like, couldn't we kind of see that was an aberration? Like, he, he's not that good in left field. And we were seeing that this year, bro. Like, that one ball, Um, I'm not sure if the runner ended up scoring or not, but that double that the A's yesterday? hit. Forget, yeah, was it yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday. That that ball should have been caught. It had um no runs. 90, it, it, I think it literally had, because Licky's a beast, but it had a 95% oh. catch probability. And no, like, I know. He, he's just not good at tracking balls. And, like, I don't think he's going to improve on that. And, like, if you do think he's putting on, you know, more pressure playing in New York, he's not able to be himself. Like, I don't think like that's going to help his situation in the outfield at all because he probably is putting pressure on himself. No, no I agree you know? a thousand percent. Yeah, I think, honestly, kind of, bro, what I'm saying is I think he's done. Like I don't think he's. I think this is his last year with the Yankees. I agree. I agree. If he even makes it through the rest of the season, but also I mean, kind of going back to you mentioned Miguel Andujar. Now I know like the the advanced metrics kind of show that Clint Frazier is one of the worst outfielders defensively in all of baseball, right? But at the same time, I think I'd still prefer him out there over Miguel Andujar, like just based on the eye test. Um, you're not Clint, telling me you trust Clint out there over Andujar. It depends. Like, I feel like honestly, call me crazy. A routine fly ball, like the definition of a routine fly ball, I honestly will take Andujar. But like, if there's like a ball in the gap that needs to be caught, like, and I have to, like, my life depends on it, like, I would probably go with Clint. But like, bro, like Andujar, I think, and would you admit this has been more solid than you anticipated he'd be in left field, at least compared to last year. Like he's look, he's looked comfortable at times. Like he has blunders what. too. I feel like he's the same amount of blunders that Clint does. You know, so the way I see it is like their defense makes them neck and neck. Just who's hitting better offensively lately? And as of late, it's Brett Gardner. So, not- <laughs> I'm like, how does it always come back to that? Like, yo, <laughs> I'm just trying to piss. I'm you're just like, oh, I see Pat's a little calm right now. So let's kind of bring this up again. Yeah. But I mean, speaking of, we're on the Yankees outfield situation, right? And here's something I talk about so often. Um, Trey Embergy, have you been following him at all in AAA? No. Nah. I okay. know he had like a crazy hit streak, didn't he, or something? Yeah, he he had like a twenty something game history, I believe, going back to twenty nineteen. Um, he's actually just raking. I think he's batting like three seventy or something stupid like that. I know we don't really love batting average, but when your batting average is three seventy, like yeah, it's oh yeah, it's of, the same it's deal as like no. it's the same deal as like if you're hitting one fifty, chances yeah. are you're not good. It's like exactly. if you're hitting three fifty, you're probably pretty good. Exactly, and honestly, like Ambergy has gotten so many kind of so much praise from guys like Eric Kratz. Remember Eric Kratz? He's like Ambergy's number one fan. He tweets about him all the time. Also, Luke Voigt, when he was on his rehab assignment down there, he said two guys stuck out to him the most, Glenn Otto and Trey Ambergy. Now, I think the issue right now is I would love to see Ambergy get an opportunity in the big leagues, right? I think he's kind of just like that life that the Yankees could use, um, kind of like 2019 next man up kind of vibes with it. But at the same time, it's like, bro, where's there a fit? And what are the Yankees going to do with this dude? Because 
this is like a Clint Frazier situation all over again. Obviously, he doesn't have the same hype around him as Clint does, but Amber Gee's like 26 years old. If you're not going to trade him or call him up, are you going to leave him in AAA for the rest of his career? And I feel like this is the case with so many guys in the Yankees organization. And at what point does it get frustrating? Mm, let me ask you, because you know more about him than I do. Do you know like how what is deep? Is he like a solid defender? Is he like- I'm pretty sure he's a he's a solid defender. So I mean, yeah. his best hope would be like maybe to, he can be a fourth outfielder at some point for us if he doesn't get traded. But the thing is, is that like as for like this year, like he would basically just be the outfield version of of Chris Gittens. You know, like he could come up for a little bit and then he would get sent down once like yeah. the replacement comes. Because I mean. This is something that like I am so set on. Like we need to get an outfielder, and I do think that we will. Like if we're gonna make one trade this year. I think it'll be for a center fielder. So I mean, like once that guy comes, like if Amber was getting full like playing time, like yeah. that's gonna go away. So I know you love him. He seems like a great dude. Like I think I watched, and you you interviewed him right or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's dude. what I watched, and uh, he seems like a good dude and hit. But like he probably doesn't have a future at least starting in, with the Yankees. But that's maybe I, I, I'm saying like best case scenario, maybe like say they did call him up. Right, which I don't think that's going to happen because what what would have to happen for for that is to carry an extra outfielder. Are you setting a Duhar down? No, no. Hear me out. Down. You hear me Clint out. Get sent down. I okay, I posed this theory, bro. I posed this theory a couple days ago. I want to inject some life into the Yankees, right? And this is like without making any trades here. I'm sending down Clint Frazier. I'm calling up Trey Ambergy, and also, bro. I think we might be on the same page as far as this goes. I'm DFAing Rugnet Odor, which I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, like the luxury tag is going to put them over because they have to pay Odor's contract. I don't really care. You call up Poijun Park. Have you been following him at all? Because that dude has I've been tearing it up in AAA as well. On Twitter. Wait, but as for, for Clint Frazier, so for a second ago, didn't you want him to start in left field? And now you're saying I never said down? that. What you're, did I you're say? Saying that? You're saying they're screwing him over. No, I'm saying that he hasn't gotten the playing time that I think he should. So I think if you're you're not only playing him in the majors, this why not send is, him down? The only thing I'm with you on in terms of this year is the uh, the two games where Gardner started when Clint was in like the smallest of slides. But uh, yeah, yeah. Um, what's it? Ho- Hojun Park, you said his name. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I mean I know he's playing well. I, Beautiful I left-handed about, like, swing too. He's left-handed. Yeah. And he plays. He's an infielder, right? Yeah. Yeah, word. I mean, I, I'm for that, and but regardless, I'm for, like I want Odor DFA'd or at least not starting anymore. Start Wade if that's what they want to do. I agree. Bat him ninth, left-handed bat adds versatility. The only negative side effect of it is that you can't have him off the bench, where it's like most of his value comes from. But bro, I, I, you can't you cannot start Odor come postseason time. Like not not a chance. No, I agree. Um, let's take a look at some of these comments in the chat. If you guys have any questions, uh, be sure to pop them in chat. We'll we'll try to answer uh, most of them. But uh, Big Brain Borg says, Dan, which center fielder do you think we will trade for, if any? One of the Martes. Um, I yeah, think Cattell Marte. Uh, preference would be Cattell Marte. Same. They're both having good years, but I think the more realistic one is um, Starling Marte. I know he's making more money, but he would probably take less. Definitely would take less to get because um, Cattell has years of control. He's overall better. He's a switch hitter. So the Yankees would probably have to give like multiple solid prospect, good prospects for him. Yeah, Starling, I think he makes like what didn't we calculate it last time? He makes like ten or something mil. So the Yanks would either have to go past the luxury tax, or they have to you know cut bait with maybe attach O'Day in a trade or Justin Wilson something like that to make room financially. I doubt but, they trade O'Day. I doubt. Well, it. I'm just saying like some guy that makes one to two mil. I'm just giving examples. No, but, yeah. uh, I, I think we'll get one of the Martes. Bro, does it still not boggle? I and I know this is like kind of going back to a topic we already touched on, but doesn't it still boggle your mind that they even traded for Rugnet Odor? Like, what was the purpose? I know at the time I was like, that made no it sense. It still doesn't make sense. No, it, it makes no sense at all. But like, the only thing I was thinking is like, maybe they're trying to like, because I do have faith in the Yankees that like they see things in hitters that other organizations don't. So maybe they felt they could fix them. That's probably what they did think, but clearly that's not the case. Like, yeah. and at this point, like, I I would be shocked, honestly. Not shocked, but like if I ran the team, there'd be no chance if he was no, yeah, still, if he if he was still on the team come uh like August after the deadline. He will be probably. But all I'm saying is like we're looking back at like the, the trades that the Yankees have made so far this season. Obviously Odor was one. Are we gonna address that comment? Not so family fun vision. How many times are we gonna ignore that comment? We're, wait, wait, <laughs> let, let me just finish my point. We'll address it. Um cool. but like uh addressing like the Yankees uh trades that they made so far this season, obviously Odor was one. Can we kind of say now, um, Dan, another reason why I don't trust advanced metrics for just about everything? The advanced metrics showed that Wandy Peralta was like such a diamond in the rough. He's awful. He's the definition of garbage, bro. Well, listen. And the Yankees continue using him in high leverage spots, and it's so annoying. The thing is, though, is that like 
And let me just state my opinion on advanced metrics. I don't want people that don't really know me too well thinking I'm some like nerd stat guru, which isn't the case at all. I like the advanced metrics that are based off of results, right? So like you bring up how um Wandy Peralta, I'm not sure which phrase you use, but basically saying that like he he could be really good, right? But that's the thing. His peripherals were really good. They show like his quality of contact, like I don't know, the spin on his ball, whatever, show that he could turn out to be really, really good. That doesn't mean he is good though. And we've seen it, bro. Like I don't even know if he's going to be on the team come August. He's been really bad, right? So, like, advanced metrics, I like looking at them when it shows, like, like results, like how, how successful somebody has been, like, at the plate or pitch, and they show somebody has been really good. Not showing that, like, they will be good because that's more so, like, indication of the future. I like, agree, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, with Wandy Peralta, like, it, it was never like, oh, he had really good results. I don't even know what his past numbers are. But, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it showed that he could be good, and just, it hasn't worked out really at all. I mean, he's blown, I think, two, three games for us in the last month. Yeah, 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 I bro, I agree a thousand percent. And I think the thing that's frustrating me so much about the Wani Peralta situation is obvious, th- th- bro. This is a fun assumption that I'm making here, but I feel like the only reason the Yankees continue to to put him in high leverage situations is not even because of the peripherals and kind of what he's expected to be, but because of I think they just want to make themselves feel like geniuses and just wait on Wani Peralta to actually get good, so they could be like, oh, like we have we found another diamond in the rough, and we we fleece the Giants for my talk. I was gonna say I think like. I, I'm on line with you here. Like they want to yeah. justify the Mike Talkman. Yes. And it's funny too, because remember what Cashman said about like right after his got hurt, do you regret the talking trade? And he's like, do you see how well Wani Peralta's pitched for us? And at the time, that was like was two games in. Yeah. Two, three games. <laughs> two, three games. And that was like, what a month or two ago now. And he has not been good. Like I was looking at stats the other day. He has like a mid fives ERA, which ERA is not everything. Did you see at all, he was warming up leaders. yesterday in the night, but, uh, bro. I know. I know. And, um, at the time, I was tweaking because I wanted Britain in, but uh, I forget what Boone's answer was. They just wanted he to stay sore, away from him. I think. But I tweeted out, I'm like, please, anybody but Wandy Peralta. I think they also had Sessa <laughs> warming up as Who well. Who I don't hate. Underrated. Oh, oh, not, bro, yeah. Sessa, bro, is so perfect for his role. So perfect. I agree. Like, he's a perfect pitcher, bro, when it's like like the fifth or the sixth, seventh inning, and you're down by like two runs just to keep you in the game or just to like – like he's a good guy to bring in that Chapman situation if you don't have like Britain available. He's just, he's just a solid pitcher, like a solid arm, definition of a solid arm. I agree. Um, I want to bring up this comment here from Alex. He says, I'm 25 minutes behind the bias Gardner hate in the face of cold hard stats is not even getting funny, but sad. Okay. I think what like we need to acknowledge here is one, it's not Gardner hate. It's two, the fact that I'm looking at, bro, I'm looking at cold hard stats and I'm saying that obviously it's portraying a narrative. That's just not true. The, the cold hard stats are portraying a narrative that Brett Gardner, like, is deserving to be the Yankees starting center fielder. And that's just not the case. I still think that the Yankees need to improve that position heavily. And while Brett Gardner might've had a decent month of June, you can't kind of ignore the fact that they still need to substantially improve at that position. But you know, that's, that's what I'm saying. Sure. And I understand that you think that that might like give the Yankees an excuse to not go after an outfielder, which they don't think it will then. No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. Like that I could understand possibly happening, which would be blasphemous if it does. But, like, the main thing I was arguing when I was getting loud before is that I'm not saying he is their second best hitter. Not by any means. He has been statistically since the start of June their second best hitter. He's played well, better than, like, bro, I mean, you probably thought, like, over the last month or so, he hasn't even been good. He's been more than good. Over well, it's the last because month. he started off the month very good and he's struggled as of late significantly. Has he? I mean, yeah, he has. Well, like, over the last, like, week or so, maybe. I would say past couple weeks for sure. I'm going to um, out. But. Uh, yeah, pull up those numbers. But in the meantime, I'm going to bring up not so family fun visions comment. He said this <laughs> isn't going to turn into lights out, right? The old Pat and Dan pod that lasted one episode. Me and Dan talked about this prior to, <laughs> to going live tonight. I can guarantee you guys that we are going to be doing this for a very long time. Every Monday night, every Thursday night, the Pat and Dan show is not going to be turning into lights out. So Facts. I can guarantee you guys we're still going to be not going it. anywhere, bro. Like that's the main thing with this. Like we're going to be so, so consistent with it. Yeah. I agree. I'm pulling up Guardy stats now. I'm actually going. interested. Like no, like no joke. Like all jokes aside, I genuinely want to know his stats. Um, but listen, chat to Easy does it with the five dollar dono. Appreciate you. Uh, he says when Gary does bad, everyone is on him. But when he's on top of his game, they still say he's lazy. Can't watch this and that. Shaking my head. Yankees need a lefty bat. Uh, I'm gonna address the first thing that you said here, and the fact that when Gary Sanchez is bad, everyone, bro, it's literally just like sheep mentality, right? It seems like when someone's just down in the dumps, people just love attacking them because he's an easy target at that point. You go on Twitter and you see everyone bashing Gary Sanchez for his poor performance. So people love to jump on that bandwagon. But then again, at the same time, 
when he's on top, I kind of disagree when he says this. Um, I haven't really seen anyone saying Gary's lazy lately. All the Gary haters are now like, wow, Gary Sanchez is doing really good. It, I don't see anybody calling him lazy, bro, think, for now. Yeah, no, I don't like you can't insult Gary at all right now. I don't think like the haters are like turning into like lovers of Gary. I think it's just like they're quiet. Like all you hear right now is the positive like takes from Gary because the supporters are loud as hell, rightfully so, because he's playing so well. But like the haters, bro, like they're just they're just not talking. Like, you know, like, yeah. you don't see them because they don't have anything to say. You know, I don't think they're turning into Gary lovers by any means. And we know, bro, by the second the second, bro, Gary starts like goes to like a, an 0 for like nine slot or something, bro. They'll be back oh, out God. in full force. It's like the Stan haters and, and then the judge haters, bro. It's the same thing with every single player. Um, did you pull up those numbers? I was just about to say, Pat. I'm interested. This makes you feel a little better. Over his last six games, Brett Gardner is sitting 125. I think it's a little bit more than his last six. No. Well, no, I um I bumped it up to uh to nine before, and his average is like 270. So, really? Yeah. So I and it also might have to do with um. He's coming as a defensive replacement too, so I should probably go by like less amount of plate appearances. But yeah, whatever saying, like over the last like probably like 15 no, yeah, because I remember him being been pretty good the, the beginning of the month for sure. Um, yeah. but I also feel like as time has gone on, it's kind of and just but, so but, I'm but, clear, and I know you know this, I, I know you know this. Like, I'm not saying Brett Gardner should be the Yankees starting center fielder. My whole point this whole time has been Gardy is a solid fourth outfielder, whether you or anybody disagrees with that or not. That's how I feel. He's a solid fourth sure. outfielder, he should not be the starting center fielder for the Yankees. That's why they have to go out and get a center fielder, which I truly do believe they will. Sure. And, bro, that's actually something that's interesting, right? Because I was looking at the comments on, on our videos uh, previously earlier today, and I saw someone make a comment, and they were like, bro, you, you need to, like, let Brett Gardner be the Yankees during center fielder. He's been such a loyal and durable Yankee. I'm like, to be honest with you, bro, I genuinely don't care about that. Performance over loyalty any day of the week. Bro, I was a firm believer when I was like 14 years old that Derek Jeter shouldn't be the Yankees' everyday sh starting shortstop, especially in a season like 2014 when they were going for it all. I'm sorry. I don't care about loyalty. I want a guy who's going to come on the field and produce, bro. Get me a Cattell Marte any day of the week over a guy who's been a loyal Yankee for 10 years. I'm sorry. I'm with you in terms of like being the starting outfielder, but like back to like that conversation where we were going at each other a couple weeks ago, I'm cool with like, the loyalty card being like the tiebreaker for bringing back Guardy as your fourth outfielder. You remember what I was talking about a couple weeks ago? Yeah. We're like over like Mike Talkman. We're like, the, if like, cause we kind of came to the equation that like at the time, at least Mike Talkman and Brett Gardner, you could look at them as like neck and neck for like being good enough to be the Yankees fourth outfielder. If there's a tiebreaker, I understand having that, a slight edge probably just because of the, sure, the, I mean, and and the team control, bro. Team control for sure. Yeah. But, uh, and let's just get it clear again. Talkman is, has like, he's like a 65. I don't want to keep bringing up way to run straight plus. He hasn't been good offensively this year. Oh, yeah, he's good defensively, but like if they're neck and neck tied, right. Talkman and Guardy, I'm cool with the loyalty card being like the tiebreaker. You know what I'm saying? But as for like, should Brett Gardner, the fact that he's been here since 2008, been a good loyal, um, durable Yankee for the longest time. Should that be why he's a starting center fielder for us? Hell no. Once again, I agree. we need to go out and get a starting center fielder. I agree. And kind of like looking looking towards the near future with the Yankees, right? They're starting a three-game series against the Royals um, starting tomorrow going into Thursday. Uh, Thursday is a big game, like I mentioned. So we'll be live after the game on Thursday for the uh, Pat and Dan show. But with that being said, bro, this is an interesting series only because the Yankees have faced two pretty good teams in their last two series. And I'm a firm believer of the Yankees seem to play to their competition so far this season. It feels like whenever they're going up against a bad team, we don't see that same sort of like re maximum effort um, as if we do when they're playing like the A's when they have all these comeback wins or the Blue Jays and they actually feel like, I don't know, something's like on the line. And, and obviously the numbers don't really prove that just because like they don't have those good numbers against the ALE so far this season. Mm -hmm. But I think- But can I interrupt you real quick? I'm, I'm backing you up on this. Like, yeah. Because like you may say like, oh, that can't be true because they got swept by the Red Sox. But like- we were in those Red Sox games. Like, those were sure. blowouts by any means. I mean, like, we came back um in the series finale. The game before was a nice, tight game. Like, we, I think I'm with you, bro. Like, you can tell, like, there's games, like, I don't want to say, like, not interested in, but, like, where they – I don't know if try harder is the word either, bro, but, like, the Detroit series, for example. Like, bro, like, they did not show up ready to play that series. And then, you know, look at, like, the, the White Sox series a month ago. They did. The A series this past uh, weekend. I'm with you, bro. I do think they play up to their competition. This, and that's really going to be proven or not come – the Fenway series this weekend, which that is, so, I mean, obviously, but that is such a big series, bro. Huge, huge it's a huge bro. series. And that's exactly why I kind of mentioned this KC series coming up because I think that you need to take at least two out of three. 100%. So you have that momentum going into Boston, bro. You, you need got, uh, dude, it. Two out of three, like in my mind, bro, like I'm 
they already have taken two out of three, in my opinion, bro. Like, that has to happen. That is going to happen. I'm hoping for a sweep. Bro, imagine going into Boston, coming high off a, off a sweep. I know. And I think I we're going to have Cole start, I think, game two or three in the Boston series. I think I looked at it the other day, and is Tyone? Tyone might be starting, <laughs> whatever it is. But that's the only thing I'll be nervous about with, with Boston. The pitcher's bro, outside of Cole. especially Tyone on the road, bro. Oh my I, want, I, I hope Domingo lines out the pitch in Boston. Okay, Domingo, I, I feel would like say has balls, bro. I don't know. I feel like Domingo does not like. I look back at like the Astros. Am I not supposed to say that? My bad. No, but, I uh, know. Oh, what? Nothing. Just keep You're getting canceled. Anyways, I uh, <laughs> Domingo gets lined up to pitch in the Boston series, and then um, Monty, I guess, wouldn't or would he? They could probably start Monty with the day off today in Boston. Yeah. So yeah. maybe ideally we'll get Cole, Domingo, and Monty. Not in that order, but if we can get those three pitching in Boston, it's looking all right. Yeah, bro, and I think this kind of goes back to um, the the donation that we just got from Easy Does It for two dollars. Appreciate you. He said we need another solid starter, um, and I think, bro, this is perfect timing to be honest with you because we're looking at going into the Boston series. And Dan, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't see like another one of our starters outside of Garrett Cole that I'm a hundred percent confident in to throw on the mound at Fenway Park and be like, just go and do your thing. Right. It's not like a Kluber. It's not like what we expected we'd be getting from Tyone. I, we don't have that guy on the rotation right now outside of Cole that we throw out there. And I'm like, I'm so confident we're going to win this game. I agree with you in like the terms of like, no matter what the situation is, no matter where it is. Yeah. If we're like, say we're like in a postseason series, I feel pretty comfortable throwing Monty at home. He's been really good at home Fair. so far. Um, Domingo, I'm saying like, bro, just any situation. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I hear you. Um, the only thing is, is that like, if we're going to get a center fielder and, uh, and, um, a starting pitcher, like we got to go past attacks now. Like we really do only have like five mil to play with. And it's not like Debbie's pitching. Well, he's getting shelled actually. And Clark's still re rehabbing from, uh, from injury. Crazy. And Debbie, like we were talking about it before, like he's coming back probably late August, best case scenario. So, yeah, I mean, I guess we do need a starter. Just who is that guy? I haven't looked at that market too much, but I mean. There's not many out there, to be honest with you. I mean, yeah. I think right now one of, like, the the low-key options that the Yankees could be looking at is maybe, like, a Kyle Gibson. But then again, I don't want that, bro. Because I don't want while Kyle he might be Gibson, having, bro. That's bro, getting I'm Kyle, about. I'm not even sure the year he's having. But, like, a getting very Kyle good Gibson, bro. Good okay, sure. That just, like, it just feels like a J-Hap acquisition. Exactly. Right? Like, I'm sure he'd probably, like, he'd be a decent starter during the regular season. You know, maybe give us a few quality starts. And then the come postseason, bro, he's going to pitch three innings and give up four runs on seven hits. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. I'm good off Kyle Gibson. I just want, like, bro, like, and someone just mentioned Tanaka. Like, I, I wish, and maybe there is, I don't know, like, I would love to have, like, a Tanaka-type starter out there that we can just get that's, like, even if they just have, like, one year Kluber, of control. Like, <laughs> Well, I was going to mention Kluber before. Let's go with him. Do we know? Um, I know he's been throwing on flat ground. I, okay, I feel like he's so, been throwing on flat ground. I feel like for a month. No, yeah. So apparently, what the deal is with Kluber is he's eligible to come off the IL July 25th, I believe. Now I'm hoping that he actually does come back July 5th. My biggest fear, though, is bro, July 5th is less than a week away from the trade deadline. You know that that has to have some sort of impact on well, the game. July 5th. That's like three weeks away. You know, are you thinking All Star break? No, no, July 25th. July 20. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, that's right. He's on the 60 day. Cause yeah. I was going to say July 5th. There's no shot. He's coming back then. No. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, word. I mean, that would be kind of nice, but that could also, <laughs> I know what you're saying. Like that could not work in our favor to where the Yankees look at him as a trade accusation, Exactly. you know, and then we don't get a starter, but Hey, listen, I gotta say, let me ask you this question. Cause this is what I'm thinking in my head. Gun to your head. You can only get one center fielder or a starter. I center fielder. No, brainer. Ooh, good no? question. No, to um, me, it's a no brainer. Because let me just say my point. And then you go on. Um, what I, the way I look at it is this. If I can only pick one, which could legitimately be the question with the, the amount of money we have to spend, go get Catal Marte or Starling Marte. There's your center fielder. And then when it comes to starting pitching, bro, you got your ace in Cole. Which So we're already in a much better spot pitching-wise than we have been in years prior, besides last year, of course. Sure. You just would have to bank on Monty pitching well in the postseason, Herman stepping up, and then just bank on Seve and Kluber being able to perform – Come back, I'm coming back from injury. And hey, I want to re um, like walk back a little bit on the way I've talked about Sevi before because I always said like, especially with the the setback, you can't have him pitch coming off an injury like as a starter. He's not gonna have enough time to be built back up. But hey, like come postseason time, four innings of Severino, like kind of like how he was in the 2018 Wild Card game, like that's valuable, bro. I will gladly take that to where like I think Sevi could I'm not give us that though. I'm not. I don't know. You don't think Sevi like because hey. When he was before that, that um, the setback, like he was touching 98. The stuff apparently looks really good. I do think Sevy could give us four innings in the postseason. We'll see. We'll, we'll definitely hey, see. Maybe, maybe, um, 
we get our center fielder and then maybe we do like a 2018 Zach Britton trade type deal where like we boost was already good. Nick was already good, even better. Get a bullpen arm for cheap. Is that bullpen arms where you can get somebody for like one or 2 million bucks? No, I know. Listen, I'm going to answer the question as to whether or not I want a center fielder or uh, a starting pitcher, but uh, let's hit on these two do- donos. Uh, one from John, John for $5. Appreciate you, my man. Uh, he says when Domingo had a two bad game stretch, everybody wants him cut in DFA, but when he has a nine game stretch with a sub three ERA, nobody says nothing. Now I'm going to say this. Um, I'm usually not a huge fan of people like being so bipolar with players, but Domingo Herman is kind of like the one guy I get it, bro. Like people just genuinely hate him as a person. Um, and I understand it. But, like, you, you can't really knock people for not liking Domingo Herman, bro. Oh, for sure. Like, And especially, Domingo, like, beating him when he's down, bro. Domingo Herman, the person? Well, I mean, the person comes along with the pitcher. Yeah. yeah. A lot no, of people I mean, don't no, what decipher I'm saying, the two. And that's totally fair. Yeah. Domingo Herman is a terrible human being, and I don't wish him any success in, his, success in his actual life. You know, like, I don't. I don't root for his actual life. I root for him, the pitcher. <laughs> I want him to do well. But the only thing I will say is this. Like, treat Chapman the exact same way they treat Domingo Herman. They should be treated equally. You know, and, like, Chapman doesn't get the same amount of hate Herman does. And I understand that in a way. But, like, you should – how do I say this? Like, I don't want to say this in the wrong way. Like, you should want Herman to succeed. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you should want Herman to succeed well. Because here's the thing. Like, Herman is on this team. He's going to be on this team, whether you like it or not. And if the Yankees cut him, 29 other teams will be lining up immediately to sign him because he has great stuff. He can be a great starting pitcher. And we've seen that for most of this year. For a good sample size, he's been really good for us. You should want Herman to do well. And if he does do well, bro, like, we're in pretty good shape, to be honest. Like, I, I think, I think like, if Herman's pitching well, Monty's pitching well around the trade deadline, I actually wouldn't be, like, disgusted if they didn't get a starter. That might be crazy, but I, I wouldn't be. It's not crazy to think about. It. It's really not. But I do want to bring up this massive dono from Easy Does It with a Yo, $20 word. bomb. Appreciate you, my man. I says a, a solid veteran pitcher uh, can do wonders for our young guys. Think about it. Once we get Sevy back, we can go into the playoffs with a solid rotation and bullpen. But let's see what happens. What do you think? A solid veteran pitcher. So, I mean, when I hear that, I kind of automatically think Kyle Gibson. I don't know why. It's funny because uh, I just looked up starting pitchers to be traded. Kyle Gibson was the first one mentioned. Matt Hart yeah. on there, too. Um, you know who I wouldn't mind actually would want depending on how well he's doing this year, because I wanted him a lot going into the season and he didn't do too well to start out Kyle Hendricks. You know, I really, bro. I think we talked about this in the off season a little bit. Cause I really wanted Kyle Hendricks. Like he was yeah, my number one bad. pitcher, bro. Bad. Especially when everyone was talking on, on like the Luis Castillo bandwagon. I was like, bro, to be honest, I think I want Kyle Hendricks. I don't know how he's doing. Uh, so far this season, though, I know he started off really slow. I have his um, numbers. So, um, yeah, his ERA is four one three. He's um he's nine and four, eighty innings pitched over uh, fourteen starts, and um this is where I will look into advanced metrics slightly. Um, his expected ERA is five point two three, and uh, his Sierra. Let me get that really quick. Is uh four three two, but he has had a pretty good a long track record of success, and he's kind of like what you described, a veteran, solid pitcher, and. I obviously don't watch too much Cubs baseball, but like just from like like the eye test from what I see from him, he doesn't seem like a guy that would get too caught up in the moment. And I'm pretty sure his postseason numbers are good. No, yeah, but also Dan, I mean, I think we kind of have to mention like he is on the Cubs. The Cubs are doing very good this season. I don't know why they fair, would, fair. especially if they plan on making a postseason. That's true. I, year, I forgot. Know? Um, the Cubs are doing well this year, so that's yeah, probably listen, that's, that's that's off the table, honestly, because especially because yeah. he has like multiple years of control. So I would actually forget yeah. about that. Uh, but shout out to Easy Does with the twenty dollars dono. I definitely agree. The Yankees do need a solid veteran pitcher. Um, Dan, before we do wrap things up today, you have anything else you want to hit on? Oh my god, we're wrapping the bro. Every time you say we're gonna wrap things up, bro, I actually get sad. Well, we said we we're gonna do nine to ten. So is that what it is? Yeah, I mean, I don't have any topics. I don't think uh, off the top of my head. I mean, do we want to talk about Aaron Judge's struggles, even though it's pointless kind of to talk let's about? Let's touch on it. No, no, let's touch on it sure. because this, it's just your guy, bro. Talk about Aaron Judge's struggles. Yeah, I mean, it's struggles. not even too much really to, to go into because like. I just want everybody to know, and like I feel like they always forget about this when it's Aaron Judge who's struggling. Bro, it's baseball. Like This is just what happens. Like Players have hot streaks, and in Judge's case, a very long hot streak, which has just been his whole season. He's had a really good season. His numbers have fallen off a little bit because like the last two weeks he's hitting, like I think, 180 like, he's hitting. But what happened the last time everybody was talking about Judge struggling? He went on like one of the best offensive tears any, of any player May, this yeah. season. Yeah, like right after the Houston series. So, I mean, he's going to get back on track. And what I said in the beginning of the show, show is so true. Like, we're starting to play well. The offense is clicking. Gary Sanchez is carrying us lately. If things are looking good right now, how good are they going to look when Aaron Judge starts hitting? 
I know. And just we to, need just to return to like the norm, not even type, type streak, bro. Which it's funny because like he's gone on like it. in terms of yeah, like he's yeah. like in terms of like contact and just like, tremendous at bats. He had that stretch. He hasn't had that crazy power stretch. He had like that that Baltimore series, and then um like a couple games after that where he was hitting homers. Like he only has 15 home runs, which is still a damn solid amount. But like we do, like, it'd be nice to have that judge stretch, bro, where he hits like 10 homers in 15 games. You know, not even just for his overall season stats, but like just what that would do for us offensively. And it's, yeah. it's gonna happen. We know it's gonna happen, especially with like that's what's so surprising is that like. Like one of judges' worst cold streaks this season happens to come when offense across MLB is going up as a whole, and that's another thing too. Yeah. <laughs> as for like the, the sticky stuff of the pitchers, like it's not just the Yankees. Like overall, offense across MLB. Oh, they is said what, like eighty percent of pitchers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like now that pitchers aren't using that, they um like offense across all of baseball is going up. So it's a good sign. Yeah, I agree. And also, I mean, let me ask you one one more question about the whole judge. Ask situation. me two. I only have one. Um, but do you think Judge is going to kind of return to form before or after the All-Star break? you think he's going to ride this into the, the All-Star break? I would say before. Now, I mean, like when you say return to form, do you mean just like return to like good old Aaron Judge, solid, yeah. like, really good player? I would say, like, so. yeah. uh, I would say I'm not saying like ridiculous hot streak. Okay. Where it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's baseball. I'm just kidding. You can't tell. But like if he doesn't return by the All-Star break. Go I mean, into like, your head. Yes or no? Yes. Oh, yes. That's okay. what I'm saying. Because like I can't see Judge being that bad if he's healthy, which he is that bad for a long stretch of time like because think about it bro like we're getting close to the all-star break but we're all it's pretty far away still i mean i think that's like what a good like three games away yeah Yeah. so like that's i think like i actually wouldn't hate to be honest and i was thinking about this the other day i wouldn't hate if they sat him tomorrow to give him two days off you know because he doesn't get too many days off nowadays really anyways i would give him tomorrow off and then it's kind of like i feel like if you have two days off consecutively like it feels like that cold stretch is a while away and you're starting fresh you know what i'm saying so I wouldn't hate it. They did that, and he's just too good to be this bad for a long time. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, but with that being said, I think that's going to wrap up episode one of the Pat Dan Show. Dan's dropping baseballs left. Yeah, bro, right on my computer. D- You're good though. I'm, you I'm breaking chilling. anything. There you go. Um, but it, bro. with that being said, uh, let's let's give the viewers a little taste of what's to come every Monday, every Thursday. Either if it's an off day, we're going to be going live at 9 p.m. If it's a game day, we're going to be going live directly after the game for about an hour. Pat and Dan show. Uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications for more. We're going to be going live on this channel. The first link in the description is to the Pat and Dan show channel. Um, every day following the when we go live, we're going to be uploading kind of like a produced version of the show as well as clips on that channel as well. So be sure to subscribe to that. It is the first link in the description. Uh, also, check out all the other links in the description as well. Newsbreak, Discord, a bunch of fun stuff on there. However, before we go, shout to Ruben Cruz with the $5 dono. He got a buzzer beater in there. Uh, he said, sorry, Pat, have Gardner derangement syndrome, LOL. Just saw the beginning of the show. Bro, it's not even that. Like, I don't know why I have to keep defending myself. I say this all the time. It's literally, the, it's not anything towards Brett Gardner. It's just towards the I'm organizational sorry, bro. treatment of that, him, It actually shocks me because like you do have something against Brett Gardner. It's okay. You don't like him. Like, you can not like players. Bro. No, I don't like, I don't like his significance on this team and how it kind of prevents other guys from getting opportunities and for the Yankees to improve their outfield. That's what other guys is in Clint Frazier. You know what it is? Yeah, because I love Clint Frazier. Yes, I was going to yes. say, it's like, it's a perfect storm of, not liking Brett Gardner and loving yes. Clint Frazier. So like all sure. in all, like you're just not, you're not about him, bro. Just, I just admit sure. that, bro. And people are all of a sudden taking me as like some Brett Gardner stand. I just like, I come off that way because I defend him against you. Who's like the biggest Brett Gardner hater, whether you want to admit it or not. Just like how you hate bat flips, Dan. It's bat flips are disgusting. Okay. <laughs> With bro, that I'll... being said, we will see you guys on Thursday for episode two of the Pat and Dan show live. Follow after on the socials as well. Don't forget the Follow socials. Follow the socials. All the socials are up here. Pat and Dan show on just about everything. So oh, stay tuned for all that content. Bro, historic first episode. You guys killed it. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time. Stay happy. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Peace. Peace.